about the time and form of the process of the sacred, El Nuarno, for the purpose of a desirable and corresponding conception of their results and when these results were actualized or, as they say, newborn, the astrologers had to draw up for each of them and, of what you that is, what your favorites call a horoscope, and from then on there their deputies guided those young beings during the whole period of their formation up to responsible age, as well as during their responsible existence itself, giving them corresponding indications on the basis of the Ablecchio Unrushin of the Cosmic Laws, constantly explained by them, relating to the action of the results of other large cosmic concentrations on the process of being existence on all planets. These indications then, to the speech, warning council, of theirs consisted in the following. As soon as a function became disharmonized in the presence of any being, or was only just beginning to be so, he would apply to the astrologer of his district, who, on the basis of the Ablecchio Unrest and of the variations expected according to calculation and the atmospheric processes caused by the action of other planets of their solar system, would indicate just what the disharmonized being should do with. His planetary body at certain definite periods of the Trentinillian movement of that planet, as for instance, in what direction to lie down, how to breathe, what movements it was preferable to make, with which types of beings to avoid relations, and many other things of this kind. Besides all this, the astrologers assigned to the beings of their flock in the seventh year of their existence, again on the basis of their Ablecchio Unrest, corresponding mates of the opposite sex for the purpose of fulfilling one of the chief being duties, that is, the continuation of the species are, as your favorites would say, they assigned them, husbands, and, wives. Justice must be done to your favorites of that period as long as these astrologers existed among them. They followed their counsels very strictly and entered into conjugal unions only according to their indication. Therefore, at that period, in regard to their conjugal unions they always corresponded to each other according to their type, just as they do on all other planets inhabited by Teshapmarnian beings far as they were from knowing many proto-autodocratic cosmic truths. The ancient terrestrial astrologers made these matches successfully because they had at least a thorough knowledge of the laws governing the influence of the different planets of their solar system on the beings breeding on their own planet, that is, the influence of these planets on a being at the moment of his conception, for further development as well as for his complete attainment of the being of a responsible being. Thanks to the practical knowledge acquired over many centuries and transmitted from generation to generation, they knew which types of the passive sex corresponded to which types of the active sex. Thus the pairs chosen according to the indications of the astrologers nearly always turned out to be corresponding, which is the opposite of. What happens there today when your favorites are united in conjugal pairs who almost never correspond in type, so that throughout their entire existence about half of the so-called inner life of these couples is spent on what our esteemed Mullah Nasser Eden expresses in one of his sayings. What a good husband he is, and what a good wife she is whose whole inner world is not taken up with the constant nagging of the other half. 
In any case, my boy, if these astrologers had continued to exist and practice there, they surely would have acquired such experience that the existence of the beings of this unfortunate planet would gradually have come to bear some resemblance, at least in their family relation, to that of similar beings on other planets of our great universe. With this beneficial practice, established in the process of their existence, your favorites have thrown, as they have all their other good attainments, without even having had time to make real use of it, to this gluttonous swine of our venerable Molinasser Eden. As usually happens there, these astrologers began gradually to shrink, and finally, as it said, they vanished. the function of the astrologers had been abolished, other professionals in the same field appeared in their place, but this time from among the learned beings of new formation, who also began to observe and study, as it were, the results issuing from the various large cosmic concentrations and their influence on the existence of the beings of their planet. But as the ordinary beings around them soon noticed that their observations and studies consisted merely in inventing names for various remote suns and planets, meaning nothing to them among the millions in the universe, and in supposedly measuring, by a method known to these professionals alone, the distances between. The cosmic points seen from their planet through those playthings of theirs, which they also call telescopes, they gave them, as I have already told you, the name of astronomers. Single quote. Now that we have mentioned these contemporary ultra fantasists, so highly esteemed by your favorites, it will do no harm to enlighten your reason as to their real significance. First of all, my boy, you should know about the existence of a something that is actualized for these terrestrial types, as it is in general for every cosmic unit and that serves for beings with objective reason as an initiating factor for comprehending the sense and meaning of any cosmic result is something which serves as an initiating factor in evaluating the significance of these contemporary terrestrial beings is a wise acronym map named by them of course unconsciously an inventory of the heavenly spaces there is no need to draw any other logical conclusion about this initiating factor actualized specially for them the very name of this map of theirs is enough to show that its designations can only be relative with the means at their disposal even though they wrap their esteemed brains in devising names and calculating various measurements, your favorites can see only those suns and planets that, fortunately for them, do not change too rapidly the course of their falling in relation to their own planet, thus making it possible for them over long periods of time, long, of course, as compared with the brevity of their own existence, to observe and, as they consciously put it, mark down their position. In any case, my boy, whatever may result from the activities of these contemporary representatives of science, please don't hold it against them. If they bring no good at all to your favorites, at least they do them no great harm after all, they have to be occupied with something. It is not for nothing that they wear spectacles made in 
Germany and special smock stone in England let them be. Let them be occupied with this. God bless them. Otherwise, like most of the other priests there who are concerned, as they say, with higher matters, they will, out of boredom, busy themselves with the struggle of five against one, and everyone knows that beings who are occupied with this exercise always radiate vibrations very harmful for those around them. Well enough. Let us leave these contemporary titillators in peace and return once more to our interrupter theme. I think, my boy, that before I continue to speak about the observatory and other structures erected for the welfare of the being existence of your favorite, you should know that the conscious power of the three brain beings manifested in the creation of those great artifacts that I saw with my own eyes, unparalleled before and after that period, was also a result of the attainments of ordinary three brain beings, members of the learned society of Afghan, which was formed on the continent of Atlantis before the second great terrestrial catastrophe, and so it will be appropriate if I first tell you, even more briefly, the history of the arising of that truly great learned society. It is absolutely necessary to inform you of this history, because in the course of my further explanations about those three brain beings of the planet Earth who have taken your fancy I shall probably have to refer more than once to that society of learned beings. And I must tell you about the history of its arising and existence so that you may realize that if something is attained by the three brain beings on your planet thanks to their being part of duty, that is to say, their conscious labor and intentional suffering, not only are these attainments utilized by them for the welfare of their own being but also, as with us, a certain part of these attainments is transmitted by heredity and becomes the property of their direct descendants. You can perceive this law conformable result in the fact that, although abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence had begun to be established even before the disappearance of the continent of Atlantis, and although after the second great catastrophe they worsened to such an extent that the ableness to manifest the possibilities proper to the presence of three brain beings was soon totally crushed in them, nevertheless, at least part of their scientific attainments passed by inheritance, even though mechanically, to their remote posterity. I must first tell you that I learned about the history of this society through what are called Heliogeneris, also found in the atmosphere of your planet Earth as you probably do not yet know exactly what a Heliogenera is, try to transubstantiate in the corresponding parts of your common presence the information concerning this cosmic actualization. A. Heliogenera is a materialized idea or thought, which after its arising exists almost eternally in the atmosphere of the planet where it appears. Heliogeneras can be formed from being contemplation of a quality such as only those three brain beings have and can actualize who have coded in their presence of their higher being bodies and has brought the perfecting of the reason of these higher being parts up to the degree of the sacred, marked and a sequence of being ideas materialized in this way concerning a given event is called a forecastinian thought case. This, 
to think and recall justice being impulses had arisen in him on just what occasions in the course of his past existence, and how he had, consciously or unconsciously, reacted to them. Analyzing himself in this manner, he began to recall exactly which impulses had provoked this or that reaction in his independently spiritualized heart, that is, in his body, in his feelings, and in his thoughts, and the state of his essence when he reacted to something more or less attentively, and how and when, in consequence of such reactions, he had manifested consciously with his I, or had acted automatically under the direction of his instinct alone. And it was then that this bearer of the future sacred individual, Belkal to see, having in this way recalled all his former perceptions, experiencing, and manifestations, clearly realized that his external manifestations did not correspond at all either to his perceptions or to the definite impulses formed in him. He then began to make similar sincere observations of impressions, coming from without as well as from within, at the very moment they were perceived by his common presence, and he made all these observations with the same exhaustive, conscious verifications of how these impressions were perceived by each of his spiritualized parts, when and how they were experienced by the whole of his presence, and for what manifestations they became the impulses. These conscious observations and impartial verifications at last convinced Belko to see that in his common presence something was proceeding not as it should proceed according to same being logic. As it became clear to me during my further detailed investigation, although Belkotasi had become convinced of the accuracy of his observations of himself, he doubted the validity of his own sensations and understanding, and even the normality of his own psychic organization he therefore set himself the task of verifying first of all whether he was in general normal in sensing and understanding everything in this way and not otherwise. To carry out this task, he decided to find out whether others sensed and cognized things in the same way he did. With this aim he began inquiring among his friends and acquaintances, trying to learn from them how they sensed all this, and how they cognized their perceptions and manifestations, both past and present, doing so of course very discreetly, to avoid touching those impulses inherent in them of self-love, pride, and so on. Thanks to his inquiries, Belkotasi gradually succeeded in evoking sincerity in his friends and acquaintances, and as a result he learned that they all sensed and saw everything in themselves the same way that he did. Now among these friends and acquaintances of his were several serious beings not yet entirely enslaved by the action of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabukar, and they also, having penetrated to the gist of the matter, became very deeply interested in it, and continued to verify what proceeded in themselves and independently to observe those around them. Shortly afterward, again on the initiative of Belkal to see, they began to meet together from time to time to share their observations and findings. As a result of prolonged verification, observation, and impartial conclusion, this entire group of terrestrial beings became absolutely convinced, as Belkal to see was, that they were not as they ought to be. A little 
little later many other beings who also had such a presence joined their group. And still later they founded the society which they named the Society of Ostan. The word, Ostan, then expressed the following concept, the striving to become aware of the sense and aim of the being of being. From the day of the founding of this society, Belko to see himself stood at his head, and the activities of its members were carried out under his general guidance. For many of their years the society existed under the same name, and its members were called Ostan Sobers, but later, when for purposes of a general character they divided up into a number of independent groups, the members came to be called by the names of their different groups. And this division into groups took place for the following reason. When the members of the society had become definitely convinced that there was something very undesirable in their presence, they began to search for every possible means of achieving its removal from themselves, in order to become able to be what they ought to have been according to same logic, and thus to correspond to the sense and aim of their existence, the elucidation of which they had determined to carry out at any cost is the very basis of their task but when they began to put into practice this task decided on by their reason, they soon realized that in order to fulfill it they must first collect more detailed information and various special branches of knowledge. And as it proved impossible for each of them individually to acquire all the necessary specialized knowledge, they divided up for convenience into a number of groups, so that each group could study one of the special branches of knowledge required for their common aim. Here you should note, my boy, that it was then that genuine objective science arose there for the first time, and developed normally until the second great catastrophe to their planet, certain of its branches even developing at an unprecedented rate consequently, during that period many objective cosmic truths, great and small, gradually became evident to those three brain beings who have taken your fancy. The members of this first, and perhaps last, great terrestrial learned society were then divided into seven independent groups or sections, and each of these sections received a specific designation. The members of the first group of the Ostan society were called Ostan Folksivers, which meant that they studied the presence of their own planet and the reciprocal action of its separate parts. The members of the second section were called Ostan Strassovers, and this meant that they studied the radiation of all the other planets of their solar system and the reciprocal action of these radiations. The members belonging to the third section were called Ostan Metrosovers, which meant beings occupied with the study of that branch of knowledge similar to our Silfornano, corresponding in part to what your contemporary favorites call mathematics. The members of the fourth group were called Ostan Psychosovers, a name designating those members of the society who made observations of the perceptions, experiencing, and manifestations of beings like themselves, observations that they verified statistically. The members of the fifth group were called 
Akan Harnas Dovers, which meant that they were occupied with the study of the branch of knowledge that combined the two contemporary terrestrial sciences called by your favorites, chemistry, and physics. The members belonging to the sixth section were called Akan Makesovers, that is to say, beings who studied all kinds of 